13 members of the House of Lords work for or have shareholdings in companies that are linked to Israel's arms trade. This even includes a British Lord who chairs a company owned by the State of Israel. Joining me to discuss this revelation is my colleague John McAvoy, who wrote the article on our website exposing these links. Thanks for having me, Phil. John, we've not been able to do a video like this for a while because we've both been off sick and we're still getting over our cold, so I apologise for the bad sound quality on this video. Um, but the article you've done, I think, is really important. I was keen to do, discuss it um, as soon as possible. You looked um, through all the House of Lords registers of interest to track down um, which members had financial ties and employment ties to arms companies um, involved in the conflict in, in Gaza. Um, and one of the most shocking examples that you found of this involved um, someone called Lord John Hutton, um, for people who've not heard of him before, could you tell us who he is and what is his connection to the State of Israel? Yeah, for sure. So John Hutton used to be the MP for Barrow and Furness. Um, one of his um, advisors at the time, actually, is John Woodcock, the current MP for Barrow and Furness, who's now in receipt of pro-Israel lobby funds and trying to crack down on um, protests, uh, pro-Palestine protests in the UK. Um, but as the MP for Barrow and Furness, um, John Hutton was promoted to um, Trade Secretary, also uh, Defence Secretary. Um, and it's not included in this article, but um, I went through you know, the WikiLeaks files to see if anything came up about John Hutton. And in around 2008, he's kind of telling the US Embassy um, in London that he's getting tired of public service. He wants to go into the private sector. This was back in New Labour days, right? Tony Blair, Gordon Brown appointed him to those cabinet positions. And then he's one of these one of many of these new Labour figures who have then, yeah, done very well in the private sector after they've left government, right? Yeah, exactly. Tony Blair included, um, but we won't go down that path today. Um, yeah, so he so he does a stint in a, in a number of different um, private organisations after leaving government, I think it was in 2009. And so he eventually ends up um, in 2022 uh, joining, the, um, joining an, a company based in Newcastle called Pearson Engineering. Um, and he joins it, I think, eight days after um, the company gets acquired by Raphael. Now, Raphael is um, one of Israel's uh, biggest arms corporations. Um, it supplies many of the bombs um, and weaponry that's being used to um, decimate Gaza at the moment. Um, it's also owned by the Israeli state. So basically, Hutton joins this company that's just been acquired by, you know, an Israeli state weapons firm. Um, and, you know, it's, it's quite clear why Hutton's seen as, as an asset to this organisation. You know, he's, he's currently a member of the House of Lords. Um, he's, you know, he's, he sits within, you know... Um, uh, influential circles and um, his experience as a former defense secretary at which time he was actually named in a lawsuit over UK arms sales to Israel and um, clearly is going to be valuable to the to the, to the company as well he, he assumably has ties with um, the Ministry of Defense and, and procurement in the Ministry of Defense as well and um, so this is what kind of value these kinds of people bring to um, arms companies um, and in this case an arms company that's owned by um, an Israeli state weapons firm. It's extraordinary because the only other place I've seen this being reported is Press TV, the Iranian um, state broadcaster. And of course, if this was someone who was working for an arms company that was owned by a foreign power accused of genocide, it, you know, if there's any other country other than Israel, this would be being reported as a major scandal. Um, but obviously, because it's Israel and people just seem scared of talking about these things. It's just been completely swept under the rug. Um, <clears throat> and so there's no inquiry into Israeli state influence in, in UK politics and the House of Lords, um, like we would see with with Russia or, or China. But if, if you go on Pearson Engineering on Company's House and look, click on who is like the significant, um, who has a significant state in the, in the firm, it comes up as the state of Israel's finance ministry. And that's because, like you say, it's been bought by Raphael, which is an Israeli state arms company. So the link there is is crystal clear. Um, you know, this is a British lord who chairs an arms company that's owned by the state of Israel. And that state is under investigation for genocide in Gaza. I mean, it's incredible, isn't it? And, and to add to that, I mean, Raphael and um, the CEO of Raphael in Israel, 
um, has recently been tasked with leading the investigation into Israel's killing of um, seven international aid workers, three of whom were British. Um, so the CEO of Raphael, whose largest client is the IDF, which stands accused and, and you know was um, responsible for killing seven international aid workers, has been effectively tasked um, with investigating themselves. Um, it's absurd, but obviously now we have British law who is working for a subsidiary company of, of, of Raphael. Um, yeah, as you say, I mean, if, if this was Russia or China, there'd, there'd be a public inquiry. And just sticking with this theme of former defence ministers, um, because you, uh, Hutton isn't the only new Labour ex-defence minister, right, who's gone down this path. You found someone else called Baroness Taylor of Bolton, who works for a French arms firm called Thales, which has heavy involvement with Israel. Is that right, John? Yeah, exactly. Um, so she's on the board of um, Thales France. Um, she was also a defence minister in the in the Labour government and um, the new Labour government. Sorry, um, and while she was um, in the new Labour government, she was already developing ties with Thales in the UK. Um, Thales was basically um, an important. Well, it continues to be an important uh, manufacturer of uh, the Watchkeeper drone for the British military. Um, the Watchkeeper drone. This is basically a massive um, Ministry of Defence funded project uh, to produce drones for the British military. These drones are based on um, the Israeli Hermes drone. Um, so effectively what we're seeing, um, as the campaign group War on One noted, is that Israeli drones are being tested out on the Palestinians um, and then they're, you know, they're being, the, the technology is being exported abroad um, as battle tested and used by the British military. John, the Hermes drone that you mentioned, that is manufactured by Elbit, right? Israel's largest arms company, which Thales has a joint venture with. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so Thales UK, the kind of UK branch of Thales, which is headquarters in France, um, they operate a joint venture um, with Elbit Systems, uh, Israel's largest weapons firm. And the, the subsidiary is called UAV Tactical Systems. And it's, it's them that, that produce um, many key aspects of the Watchkeeper drones. Thales have absolutely stacked their, their company with these British lords. So they've also got, um, as advisors, Baron Arbuthnot, who was a former chairman of the House of Commons Defence Select Committee. They've got Lord Houghton, former General Houghton, who was Chief of the Defence Staff, the British military's most senior soldier. And they've got Lord Powell of Bayswater, better known as Charles Powell, who was Margaret Thatcher's chief advisor for defence and foreign policy throughout the 1980s. So, I mean, they've really got the kind of cream of the British elite, haven't they, on their company payroll? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, it's it's a similar case as, as John Hutton. You can see exactly why these arms firms um, find it find it useful to get all these former British uh, army, army um, officials, former and defence secretaries, defence ministers you know, onto their payroll um, because they they hold influence within the, you know, the British government and they presumably have a lot of influential contacts and they understand how power within Whitehall works. Yeah, and another company that you looked at, which I think is really alarming, is BAE Systems, who make the rear fuselage for the F-35 jet. Uh, we know that 15% of parts for the F-35 are made in the UK, but the, the rear fuselage is made by BAE Systems. And then that's exported to the US, and then the US hands out these aircraft to Israel, which uses them to bomb Gaza, and it bombed, I think, the Iranian consulate in Syria. Um, they used an F-35 to do that. And you found that at BAE, you've got uh, Lord Mark Sedwell, a former UK National Security Advisor, former Cabinet Secretary. And yeah, he's a non-exec director at BAE since um, November 2022, so not long after he left Whitehall, <clears throat> the revolving door spun into action. Um, and there's a couple of other lords there who have um, shares in BAE. Yeah, so as, as you mentioned, Phil, BAE Systems, um, kind of Britain's flagship arms corporation, produces some of the key parts for the F-35s, um, known as the most lethal fighter jet in the world. Um, as you mentioned, they've been used um, again to, to decimate Gaza over, over recent years. Um, Mark Sedwill, the non-executive di uh, director of um, BAE Systems, is an interesting case because he, he recently went, I think, on the BBC um, uh, or, or another kind of daytime television show 
um, and suggested that you know it's important that the UK government publish its um, you know its uh, legal advice on arms sales to Israel, um, and he wasn't convinced that Israel was complying with international humanitarian law. Um, yeah, at the same time, he works for or is working with um, BAE Systems, an arms manufacturer that is profiting massively from Israel's genocide on Gaza. Um, so I think he needs um, he needs to get uh, get get his, his his ideas a bit a bit a bit more clear in, in this regard. And um, you know, does he does he support Israel's uh, war on Gaza or does he not? I came across Mark Sedwell. Um... A few years ago when he popped up in Oman working for the, uh, which is a autocracy, um, the Sultan of Oman was one of the, well, he was the longest serving dictator in the Arab world, uh, ruled for 50 years. And he had this secret privy council um, of British um, elite that he flew out on his private jet um, every new year. Uh, for this like, all-night banquet where they gave him advice on defence and foreign policy and the economy. And Mark Sedwell was one of the members of this secret Privy Council. Um, so again, just shows how kind of well-connected he is. Um, and these are exactly the kind of figures that BAE want to have on their board. BAE, of course, sold lots and lots of weapons to Oman as well. Um, so that's the kind of um, circles that he's that he's moving in. Um, John, who else was there that we haven't mentioned yet? Yeah, so so Lord Peach um, works as um, sorry works on the board of um, Martin Baker, which, as you recently reported, Phil makes um, the explosive cartridges for many of the ejection seats um, for the F thirty five warplane. So these are a really integral part um, of the plane, and as you reported, they they probably couldn't function without it. Um, and, and of course, it, within this context, Martin Baker sells a lot of these explosive cartridges, um, which, which get sold on to the F-35 jets, which are sold to Israel um, and then are used within the bombardment of Gaza. Um, so there's, there's a, um, an, another example of a, of a British lord who's, who's you know, linked and working for an arms organisation that profits from arms sales to Israel. 